Hello everyone, welcome along. It's Betting Weekly Game Bet Match, the number one tennis betting podcast and YouTube show brought to you in association with Bet Rivers, your hometown sports book. It's Tuesday, which means we are looking ahead to the tournament action, which is going on across Europe at the moment this week. Three ATV Tour tournaments. We'll come on to the matches in a minute, but I'd like to say joining me is our ATV Tour handicapper. It's Sean Calvert. Good morning, Sean. How you doing, mate? You're right. Afternoon. Yeah, you, you threw me a bit there. Wasn't sure what what time of day it was, but yeah, it's afternoon. Yeah, I'm I'm all right. Bit a bit of a cold. Woke up today in these freezing British temperatures, and it's uh, my delicate constitution has has given up. I think as a as a small cold heading my way, but uh, you know I'll, I'll soldier on. It's not it's not pleasant conditions here, or or in Munich. It was hailing here yesterday. Well, it, we had hail here this morning, and now as we're speaking, the sun is shining through this window, as you can see here, but the rain is really coming down. And in the distance, I can see lightning and a bit of thunder. So if we go offline for some reason, you know, it's going to be the weather affected here. And the weather's been, you know, we've had about, we've had um, tournaments this week, you said about affected about the weather, but touch wood so far, all three tournaments going along as scheduled, no problems in Barcelona, but no problems in Romania. But um, Munich, it, it's going on as we expected, just play yeah. being played. It's being played now, but the forecast for the next four or five days looks like solid rain the whole time. How much of it is is, is going to be the issue? If it's only a tiny bit of drizzle, they might be able to play through it, but it doesn't look great, the forecast there, for the rest of the week. As I said, snow is in the forecast there on, on Thursday and I think Saturday and Sunday as well. It, it, that'll be probably in the night time, so you might not see that. But yeah, it's just it's going to be really, really cold. Whatever happens, I can guarantee you it is going to be very cold in Munich. So if you're, thinking of, if you're in Munich and you're thinking of going to the tennis... I'd pack some uh, some extra um, extra jumpers and a, a potentially a uh, raincoat of some description. We're talking about clothing. Look at this. We're modelling the new Bet Rivers tops. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. There you go. You can't uh, way to uh, see uh, that. Yeah. Not great for podcast listeners, this, but no, yeah. It's Both quite snazzy. Quite snazzy. Very nice they are as well, aren't they? Yeah, very nice. Very 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 snazzy. Uh, they all the all the handicappers have been sent them now, so see who actually wears them on the shows. We're waiting to see what goes on there, but. Uh, Rather well, snazzy, the new uh, the Bet Rivers T-shirts there. Mine is the same colour, but it's the difference of the light coming in here. So the light comes from this side, and this side a bit more shady. So uh, where the, the computer's position is not really good for lighting. Anyway, uh, enough about the fashion. We, no, we don't need any fashion tips for sure. We've, we've had the fashion right. tips already uh, all over across Europe and, and across the world. We wear the, the, the because we win branded clothing. But we have four matches tomorrow. Uh, we're going to discuss, and all of them, you know, despite being three tournaments going on. All of them are in Bucharest in the 250 event. And it's the Tyriac Open. Um, before we come on to the matches, Sean, what's the what's, what's the takeout so far? What are the conditions? What, are you, what have you seen after the first couple of days' matches? Yeah, it's difficult because the, the weather keeps changing. On the clay, it, you know, the conditions will change uh, depending on the weather. It was pretty warm in Bucharest today, yesterday, but Wednesday there's quite a lot of rain due, and it, but it, it might be after play has finished and overnight, so it might not affect... Um, the, the playing conditions too much tomorrow, but it is going to get a lot cooler. Twenty one degrees, not a lot of wind around. So if if the rain does miss um, the area or miss the the time slot of the of the matches, then it should be you know the playing conditions should be reasonably all right in Bucharest. I was just watching the Vavrinka match. We had him, didn't we, to win the first set yeah, he did. against Portuguese, which he did happily. Um, no, he made it look quite quick, but there again, he's a very very powerful player. You know, other players have made it look not so quick but it looks it looks a little bit lively for a clay court i would say um certainly wouldn't call it slow conditions although it may get slower in the coming day depending on whether this rain hits or not uh yeah we've got four matches in request we're going to speak about uh some decent prices available uh, not so many markets available just yet with bet rivers but as the day progresses there will be more added i reckon by the time these players take to the court you'll be looking at about 31 different markets available. But uh, money lines, total games, and the uh, handicap of spread is what we are concentrating on today. Uh, let's look at the first match uh, we're going to speak about. It's Tabilo up against uh, Rindikanich. Uh, Tabilo, number four seed, hasn't played yet in the tournament. The last match he played was in Monte Carlo. He got beat by Casper Rude in straight sets. Rindikanich comes through a, a marathon match yesterday against Gaston. We touched on the match. Why mm. Rivers were 24 and a half on the total? So they knew something that we didn't know because it cashed... Very easy for over betters there. Uh, the price mm. here, Tabilo is minus 182. He's the number four seed here. Winter Connect is plus 140. The spread is two and a half, minus 125 for Tabilo, uh, minus 110 for Rindy Connect receiving two and a half. And the total here, lower, three games lower than the, the first match for Rindy Connect is 21 and a half. Over is minus 150, under is plus 110. These two players have never met each other before. 
Uh, Tabillo's got a slightly better play court record, five and four in 2024, and Winter Connection's two and two. But he has come in with a win here under his belt against Gaston. The positive side of it is he's got a win under his belt in those conditions in Bucharest. The downside is that it was a long, very long match. Yeah, I mean, for me, this is about Rinder Connection, his weakness against lefties. You know, he just about scraped it past Gaston. I think it was 7-5 in the third, wasn't it? But he, he only won 30% of return points that day, Rinder Kinesh, against a, what is a very weak server in Gaston. That's what I highlighted the other day. He doesn't, he doesn't break serve often enough against lefties. Gaston won 81% of his first serve points um, against Rinder Kinesh. Gaston shouldn't be winning 81% of points on clay against anybody, really. Um, Tabolo is a much stronger server, also left-hander, obviously. Um, Rinda Kinesh against left-handers in his last 10 matches at main level. He's only won 32% of return points. Break serve only 11.9% of the time. So it, it's a tricky one for Rinda Kinesh. Last 12 months on clay at main level. Tabolo, much better record. 103 service points, one in return points, one total. And a 107 hold and break total. Rinda Kinesh, 101 and 103. Um... It's just Rindakesh doesn't win enough return points against lefties. Only breaks, um, doesn't break serve often enough. Um, Tabolo's been serving really well this year. The, the lines have changed since I looked at this. I was looking at minus two and a half games around about 1.88, but I think the odds have changed a little bit on this one now. Yeah, minus two and a half is now minus 125. So it's coming a little bit. Yeah, it's, it's, it's where I'd be heading on that one if I was having a bet in this one. So a small link for Tabolo to win minus two and a half games. It's minus 125. Uh, Rindelich does struggle against lefties. Tabilo may capitalise. And obviously the fact that Rindelich has played a long match prior to this match isn't a positive for Rindelich betters. Uh, so leaning towards Tabilo, the number four seed, that's going to the favourite there as far as we can concerned. No official play, but minus one is still. Head across to the Betridge website. There'll be a whole host of markets when these two players take to the court. And they're scheduled to take to court nice and early tomorrow. It's 5 a.m. starts. And remember, if you bet live with Bet Rivers, you'll be able to watch live as well. You'll be able to watch the match early morning before you head to work on your tablet or your mobile device, whichever one you want to watch the match on. Uh, the next match is of interest to me, actually. I was quite surprised by the odds when I saw here. Say Bath Wheel is minus 139 against Navone. Uh, Navone is plus 110. Uh, the spread here is one and a half, minus 120 for Say Bath Wheel, giving up one and a half. Navone plus one and a half is plus 120. The total again is 21 and a half with over minus 150 and under minus 110. Uh, they've met three times previously, all at the same event, the British Airways Challenger. Um, two wins to Navone in 2021 and 2022. And the Seabeth Will won their last match in 2023, very easily, 6-2, 6-3. And for that match, he started a minus $3 favourite. Not quite sure why, but we'll come on to that in a second. Um, Sabath Wild, I actually bet against Sabath Wild in the last round, and I was talking to you about how unlucky I was just there. That is... That. I bet Nardi yesterday. Five how unlucky is that? Yeah, five match points. And then he gets injured, and then uh, Sabath Will gets over the line. I, that was one of my that was my first bet of the day yesterday. My day didn't get any better as the day went on, and I had about three or four sim, not so bad as that. But I bet Krajikova in the women's tennis, she had match points. She should have won it easy, and she didn't. She lost in a final set tiebreak as well. It was just a day from a nightmare day yesterday. Um, but uh, he came through against Nardi very luckily. But Navoni was very impressive against Cardelli. Um, I was quite surprised that Navoni was. Plus 110 here, considering he's 15 places higher in the world rankings than his opponent. And he's got a really good record on clay, 16 and 6 this year. I know it's probably at a lower level, but it is at a lower level. But uh, semi finalist in Marrakesh, beaten by Berrettini in a tight match, in form, I thought plus 110 looked a little bit wrong to me. I think it looks very wrong. I mean, you've just said about Saboth, lucky to win against Nardi. As he said, five match points and rolled his ankle. I mean, how's your luck, you know? Um, Navoni's result was. Perhaps a little bit flattering as well because Dardari, who he played, had a wrist injury and later on pulled out the doubles because of that reason. So a little bit flattering perhaps for Navoni, but he did play well. So you can only beat what's in front of him and he did it very well. I feel like this matchup, Saboth Wield's got a, I feel like he's got to play a very clean match to beat the counterpuncher Navoni in these sort of conditions. You know, Navoni gets a lot of balls back. He's going to frustrate Saboth. Saboth likes to get on the front foot. He likes to use his power. He likes to attack. And when it's going well, when it's clicking, you know, he looks great, but it doesn't always click that often. Um, the head-to-head -head heavily favours Navone. I know they were all played uh, coincidentally and quite peculiarly. All three matches were played at the Buenos Aires Challenger. So you might argue Navone's had a, a bit of a, a boost there in terms of, you know, he knows the conditions a bit better. But even so, 
the, the service points one and return points one tells Navone 106, uh, Saboth World 94. So pretty overwhelming for, for Navone in terms of the head to head so far. Um, looking slightly deeper into that head to head, Saboth World's only held serve 61% of the time in those three matches, and Navone's won 45% of return points. So he's 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 really got a, a read on the the, the Saboth World serve, and he's breaking a lot of the time, as he does generally on clay at main level these days. Look at the last 12 months on clay at main level. Saboth Wild, 50% win rate. And they've only 67% win rate. This is all main level stuff. Um, service points, one and return points, one total. Saboth Wild, 99. They've only 103. If you want to look at the service hold and break totals, also heavily favours Navone, even more so, in fact. Uh, Saboth on 98. Navone on 106. So, and as I just touched on there, the return points. Navone's won 44% of return points in the 12 main level matches he's played on clay in the last 12 months. Most of those were were this year, very, very recently, in fact. So, the head-to-head favours Navone. The, the recent clay stats favour Navone. Um, so, Navone, for me, I mean, looks like the wrong favourite to me if, if, on these stats. Um, and on the matchup, as I said, if Saboth is going to win this match, he's going to have to play a clean one and I don't like the odds on him doing that. Odds on him playing a clean match and and wiping Navone out. That's not for me. So plus plus money plus one time bet Rivers Navone. Yeah, uh, yeah. official play for me. I like that. The only, the only reason I was slightly put off a bit was because that Saber Wheel started minus three hundred in their last match, and I thought why why was he minus three hundred in their last match? I thought. You know, well, it was a while ago. You know, Navone's broken through now at this level, whereas he hadn't then. Um, and he's got the statistics to show that he's a more than capable performer, impressive performer um, at this level. I know most of those matches were played in South America, but even so, I, I still feel like it's uh, it's a value price. Yeah, uh, I was so lucky yesterday. I couldn't believe it when I was watching that that uh, match. Yeah, uh, five match points. Five yeah. match points. You don't often there. get a five match point. I've had a couple of five match point losers before, but they're they're few and far between. I think Kajik had ran about three match points as well last night as well. It's just one of them days. I just I had a good, I had a good, I had a good obviously, Sunday about Aston Villa to beat Arsenal. And I did all right. And I, I give half of it back. And I bet since it has to win the tournament as well. So we, got, we, got, we got a bit told off by it. I don't know if you saw the comment. Someone actually said to on Twitter, oh, you you didn't tip since it pass up. Now, listen, I, I'm going to sort of address that for you now. We are a show sponsored by Bet River Sportsbook. And we we give bets on the vice of Bet River Sportsbook on here. Bet Rivers for that. The Tsitsipas match, uh, so that all tournament match were half the odds that was available elsewhere. So we never, we can't pick them with with Bet Rivers because we think the 16 to one. They're very shrewd to be the best price, but sometimes we think there's value in their prices, and we have a bet. Sometimes we don't, but it doesn't stop myself for sure betting with with other other book sports books, and that's exactly what we did. So if you followed the Instagram account, you would have seen that we were very keen on Tsitsipas on every single one of his matches, and I stated on it that he was the takeout, and he was probably the bet to win the tournament. And uh, if, you know, if, if you if you if you if you look around, we're not going to put sit to pass in our figures here. Our figures still show minus six fifty. Yeah. So yeah, we, we we do have bets other than what we suggest here because prices come out, and we do t- talk about our our betting strategy. But every bet that we mention on this show will be on the figures, and we're not trying to hide figures. And we're not trying to to uh, discourage anyone. If you think you'll you know the, the one thing we pride ourselves is in, is now is now honesty on our figures at the bottom, whether we win or whether we lose. Whatever sport we do here on because we win, uh, and uh, of course the bet with us, uh, bet in weekly studios, we keep our records real. So um, you know we did we did both have a small bet on tits to win the tournament. You would have followed it if you followed the Instagram account, but unfortunately on that Sunday when we gave the picks, we couldn't bet him at the price that bet was very shrewdly had. So that was that's that's not, nothing about it, isn't it? It's true, it's true though, isn't it? It's exactly true. Exactly, yeah. If I, if I'd have put him up at sixteen to one which was the price that Bet Rivers offered, then that wouldn't have been value. So I'd have been disingenuous, wouldn't I, by, by putting that up at 16 to 1, having backed it at 33 to 1 elsewhere. I can't yeah. I can't say, you know, to myself, oh, I'll have that at 33 to 1, and then say, oh, I'll have it at 16 to 1 as well. It, it doesn't make any sense, does it? But it works. It, it, it we works did talk about him in that favorite. preview. I did say, didn't I? I, I said, sits a pass. Sorry, mate. I said, said sits a pass. It's got a very good chance at the bottom half of the draw, but the reason I couldn't put him up was because the the, the price was was not not valued. And it? over a season, Bet Rivers will be the best price in some things, and, we, and we'll bet them. At other times, we, we we might have a decide to have a bet, but might not have a picket on this show because it just they're they're right in that their assumption of making that person a better 
better price or a worse price than the market price. So, you know, it, the one thing I will say, and, I, and I'll just this, this will be draw a line on it. Whatever we said on this show, or we, if we're saying we bet, they will not be on the figures. The figures of the official bets that were mentioned on this show, and last week, six of us was a bet that myself and Sean had, but it was an official bet on this show because Bet Rivers very cleverly and very shrewdly had him half the price from the rest of the market industry. Okay, uh, let's move on to the next one's Berer against Kokonakis. Um, this interests me actually, it's because there's been some money for Berer uh, in the last couple of hours or so. Uh, there's only one been one meeting before, which was completed, and Kokonakis won it and Santra Pay on a challenger event back in 2021. But Kokonakis comes in here. In some really good form, actually, he won the Sarasota Challenger on clay. Uh, Barrera is now minus 114. Uh, Kokonakis is still holding on to favouritism just with Bet Rivers at minus 109. But I expect that to flip uh, in the next few hours or so. Uh, the handicap is one and a half, but it's pretty much irrelevant because the money run is so solid. And the total games here, is, the total is 22 and a half with over minus 127, under uh, plus 100. Barrera has come through qualifying here, played two matches in qualification, looked quite impressive, hasn't dropped the set. And Kokonakis is obviously flying across from uh, Sarasota to be here in uh, Bucharest, and this will be his first match. But he is coming fresh after a, a decent win on the clay. Yeah, I mean, I've got a theory here, and it's one that I think a lot of people are going to pick up on and and that's why the the money line is moving and the theory is that we might see a less than committed effort from from cocking Arcus in this match the reason being is that he secured his main draw spot at the French Open by winning that Sarasota challenger on Sunday so, and that was his aim now you might see him relax a little bit mm -hmm. you know he said and I, I'm going to quote him here after that Sarasota challenger when he said this is my springboard to the French Open I'd be lying if I said I didn't feel any pressure out there that made it tough, but I just kept fighting. I knew what was at stake. And just in case people don't know, that the, the cutoff for the draw of majors is, I think it's 42 days before the first Monday of the of the tournament, in this case, the French Open. So you have to go back 42 days, which was, I think, either Sunday or Monday, either yesterday or... The, yeah, it must have, been, must have been yesterday, Monday. So that was the cutoff. So the first, however many it is, 100 or... I think it's 100, isn't it? roughly 100 players that are, that are in the rankings, the top 100 on that day, qualify. So that's how that's how uh, Kokinakis has got, him, got his place in the French Open already so soon. I know there's several weeks of matches still to go, but the cutoff has been done. So he's now qualified. He's also travelled, as about to travel or has travelled, 12 hours at least. It's a 12 and a half hour flight from Miami, presuming, presuming he flew from Miami um, to Bucharest. That's not an insignificant distance. And he's got to play on very, very different clay, Bucharest, to the American clay that he was playing um, on in Sarasota. Very, very different conditions. Long flight, not much time to to adapt. Um, and he's qualified for the French Open. So from that side of things, I can see why people are back in Berre. I, I can understand it. I get it. And I, th I think it's a, a reasonable play. It's certainly my my lean in this match to take Berre on the money line. The advantage berre has got as well as well as all that, is the fact that he's already been here for a while, qualified with a couple of decent wins. One very decent win over Luca, uh, Luca Pui, who's been playing quite well, quite well recently. He's obviously going to be the one far more attuned to conditions. The head-to-head -head is is just one match, but it, and Kokinakis won it, but very unlucky, Barrer. Barrer won one point over one more point overall in that match. He won more points on his first serve, more points on his second serve, but similarly to Zhang today, he was poor on the big points. Kokinakis took four of his six break point chances that day. Barrer three of twelve. So the big points let Barrer down that down that day. He he was could have been a worthy winner on another day. I say well, one more point in the match. So their all time record on clay, by the way, at main level, there's nothing in that either. Both have got pretty mediocre records on clay. Service points one and return points one tells a ninety seven um, each. Now, if you look at what Kokinakis has done on clay at main level, most of the matches he's played, I've been at the French Open, he's only played in his entire career, he's played five ATP World Tour matches on clay at main level. And three of those were at altitude in Geneva, where his style of play would be much more suited. The other two matches at sea level, he lost. So there's a lot of... I can see why the money's coming for Barrer. Um, I understand it, and that, that would be my lean here. It's, it's quite likely we'll see a bit of a, a letdown from Kokinakis. You've talked me into a bet there. Surely, on, the, on what you just said there. It's a theory. Only a lean? Only a lean? It's I, a theory. Like the theory. 
It, it's a theory. It could be. It could be completely wrong. He might be absolutely buzzing after winning that Sarasota title, and he's slept like a baby all the way through, and he's he's going to rip through this. But you know, there are enough reasons to kind of. The, the problem is Barrett. He's he's talking about retirement recently. He's in one. He's he's not. He's he's in a bit of a funk. Um, he obviously can't qualify for the French Open now. His ranking's too low. He's going to have to either get a wild card, which he may do. I, I doubt it, but he might. Um, or he's got to go through qualies. So, yeah, he was on about retiring if his if results didn't pick up. But players do this. Mikel Ema today, he retired, didn't he, after he, he got banned for it's doping, wasn't it? Mm. He got doping banned. Now, all of a sudden, after he's done nothing for six months, he's bored. And he wants to come back after his after his band finishes. So, you know, players change their mind. Players get unhappy when they're losing and they say, oh, I've had enough of this, I want to retire. You know, Berre has not been in he's been in poor form all season, let's let's be honest, but he's got an opportunity here. You thought me in a bit. Regardless if it's not going down on the record, and I'm sorry if I'm gonna have a bet someone else, but it's not you going can, on the record. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna bet it definitely. I think the case you've made there, Kokonakis has set his target to make the French Open for the clay court season. He's done it. I can see him easing up here. Conditions won't sue. Get back into Europe. So sort of familiarize yourself with the with the with the clay. And this, this tour, just you know, get out there, have a bit of have a bit of practice and see how you go. But I I, I think especially if Barret does a break up, I can't see Kokonak is trying at all for this match. So I really like that. And I and I think that the market move here is significant as well. And also I believe that he will probably start a heavier favourite than what he is at the moment. Barrett is minus 114. So uh, I think that move will be considerable over the next sort of few hours or so. Remember that match there is also 5 a.m. start tomorrow. I didn't say Seth Raff Wild against Navon. Navon tomorrow is 11 a.m. Eastern time as well. So very early start, 5 a.m. If you think that the theory that Sean has put there on Berrer is value, you want to get across to Bet Rivers now and take that minus 114 because I don't think it will last. I certainly will be doing so. Uh, the final match we're going to concentrate on is an all Argentinian affair between the number one seed Francesco Serendulu against Federico Curian. Uh, Seren Dulu is a heavy favourite here, minus 195. Curio is plus 150. The spread is three and a half. Seren Dulu minus 110, giving up the three and a half. Curio minus 125, receiving the three and a half. The total looks a little bit low for me, 20 and a half. Minus 162 for over, plus 120 for, over, uh, for overs. I'm uh, sorry, overs minus 160, under uh, is my plus 120. Uh, these two have met many, many times, nine times in fact, and every single one of them is in play. And it's 6-3 to Curio. Uh, but Serendulu won their last match uh, last year in Bristol, 6 3 6 3. And he also, in, Korea, in Cordoba, Korea won 6 3 3 love because Serendulu had to uh, retire midway through the second set. And they also had to retire in the 2021 Challenger as well. So those, those stats are probably a little bit misleading. It should be 4 3 on completed matches. Um, Serendulu, long trip back from. Uh, well, Monte Carlo, he paid him, he paid Spachanoff in, in Miami, then he paid him again in Monte Carlo, couldn't get over the line in both those matches, hasn't been playing very well, he's lost three of his last four. And Courier, I watched a Courier match in um, Estoril against Van der Sancho. How Van der Sancho won that match, I'll never know, but he did. Uh, he was carrying yeah. my money as well, Courier, and I promise never to bet him again. So hopefully we, we'll, you're not making a case for Courier. I'm going to make a case for Courier. Oh, I'd, rather <laughs> bet, I'd rather bet Jim Courier. <laughs> and, uh, on, on the I'm not play, sure he's still playing. Play. I'm not sure he's still playing. He might have a chance if he's still playing. He was decent on clay, wasn't he? Very decent. Yeah. Um, classic matchup. This obviously of the powerful shot maker Serendolo against the the gritty counter puncher in Korea, similar to the Navoni and Saboth Wild kind of matchup, really. But the big hit has got to play a clean match to win. Korea is not going to give you a single thing on a clay court. Um. The head-to-head, -head, as you said, it, it does favour Corey. A couple of them, as you said, were retirements. But over the course of the nine matches, I know some of those were a few years ago, but Corey does lead 104 to 96 in the service points, one and return points, one totals. Corey has won 45% of return points in this matchup. Again, similar to, to Navone against Saboth Wild. And Serendola has only held serve 64% of the time. Corey, with his weak serve, has held serve 72% of the time in this matchup. Second serve points favours Corey as well, 55%. Of second serve points, he's won in this matchup. Serendolo, 47%. The only thing that, that Serendolo kind of leads the way on, if you like, in terms of stats, are the last 12 months as a whole um, at main level on the clay. Better win rate, 59% compared to 52. And his service points, one in return points, one total is 103 compared to 100 for Courier. So he leads on that. However, 
if we just look at this current season, 2024, on clay at main level, it's the other way. Corey has got 102 total. Serendolo, 99. He hasn't found his best tennis so far this season. So I definitely couldn't back Serendolo at that price. If I was betting in this one, I'd be I'd be tempted to um, put a bet on Correa and then just not watch the match because it would be it would be it would be horrible. It would be it would be a, a ton of breaks. I should imagine, desperate for Correa to hold on. He's he's not the kind of guy he wants serving a set out, is he? But um, yeah, get Correa for me here plus plus one fifty, wasn't he? With Bet Rivers earlier on when I saw plus one fifty still available minus one ninety five. He does lead that head head six three, but obviously in completing matches it's four three. If you want to get a little bit more safe, you can bet Courier a plus three and a half at minus 125. But we sort of not really like to place those kind of bets because in clay court tennis, you get a lot of six love, six ones. And this kind of match looks like yeah, it could be a complete blowout by either player at any stage. Yeah. I mean, if you look at their nine matches, I've just got them on my screen here. I know two of them retirements, but only one's gone to a third set. All the others have gone to straight sets. Mm. So... Yeah, the Correa on the handicap is is a recipe for disaster, isn't it? He could win the match, and you could lose the handicap because yeah. he's dropped a set six one or six two, or and he, you know he's edged the others. Yeah, that's happened to me before when he's you know won the match, lost the handicap, and you've bet the handicap. That's that's quite an annoying feeling, isn't it? So I would just take Correa here if I was having a go on this one, but I think the Navona bet's got Navona bet is the uh, the one the bet of the day for me. Yeah, so there are a few leans. Some lean stronger than the others, but uh, we're leaning towards Tabilo to be really fairly easily against Rindikanec at 5 a.m. in the morning. And the other 5 a.m. start, Berair to beat Kokonak, is the line is starting to move for the Frenchman there. So head across the Met Rivers early to get the price there, currently minus 114. Uh, 8.30 a.m. is the time for Serendula and Courier, and we're leaning towards Courier plus 150 to extend his head-to-head -head record. And our official pick, at 11 a.m. Eastern time is Navoni at plus 110 to beat Seth Rothwild, who must be the luckiest man in Bucharest this week after he was saved five match points and his opponent got injured in the tiebreak to get him through to face uh, the Argentinian in round number two. Uh, so that's the bets. That's the leans. Uh, remember, there's loads of action you can follow here on Betting Weekly Studios. You can follow the YouTube show or subscribe to the YouTube show. You get all the tennis action with myself and Sean on the AP Tour, Robbie Giovanni on the WTA, as well as some huge soccer content as well. It's a huge week of the Champions League, Europa League and Europa Conference League quarterfinals, second legs, some big, big matches tomorrow. Manchester City play Real Madrid. Uh, Bayern Munich play Arsenal. We have you covered on the show there. Uh, we're going to show live now. Uh, you also download the podcast, Betting Weekly Game Bet Matching, your preferred podcast provider. And also, obviously, follow us on our socials at Instagram and on Twitter at Because We Win. And on that Instagram account, you will see pics on days and suggestions, live in play, stuff that isn't on this show. So if you're only watching this show and thinking they're the only picks the guys are having, that's not the case. On the Instagram page, there's lots more content, lots of live stuff, lots of in-play stuff, at venue stuff where we're saying this guy could be a bet or this guy could be a bet to win the tournament or maybe even looking ahead to the French Open and other slams as well. So make sure you follow that as well and be across everything that we're offering here, the team of handicappers at Because We Win. Uh, Sean, have a good day. Hopefully it doesn't rain too heavy. Thank you. Did you hear the thunderbolts? Did you, did you hear the light, the, thund the thunder out there? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. it wasn't my tummy rumbling, if you heard it. It was the thunder and lightning coming through the windows. Uh, anyway, have a good day, and we will be back tomorrow with more picks. Remember, there's three tournaments this week, not only in Bucharest. We have a tournament in, in uh, Munich in the freezing cold and a rather pleasant conditions in Barcelona, and we will have you covered on all those three events. We'll be back tomorrow to give you more best bets on the HP Tour. Have a good day. Speak to you again tomorrow.